So the big question is this, how do small businesses like yours, who feel like you're doing all the right things and going to all the right events, reach the federal buyer in a way that helps you win more contracts? That is the question, and this is the place to get your answers. My name is Neil McDonald. Welcome to the GovCon Chamber of Commerce. Okay, let's get started. In this series, I'm sharing the top 10 steps every small business government contractor should take if you want to be successful in the federal government market. I include two bonus steps at the end of the series just to really round it up to an even dozen. In a minute, I'll walk you through step three and discuss meeting with your local small business development center. First though, this content is brought to you by the GovCon Chamber of Commerce, the only organization dedicated to the success of all small businesses in the federal space with members from Guam to the US Virgin Islands and every single state in between. Each year, roughly $125 billion is awarded to small businesses as prime contractors. Our vision is to double that by helping small businesses truly understand the process for success. Small businesses are the backbone of America. By helping you succeed further in government contracting, we'll be strengthening American communities together. My name is Neil McDonald and I've been where you are now. I've been a small business owner for 20 years, building two successful firms selling to the federal government. I've won subcontracts with small and large prime contractors. I've won prime contracts with defense and civilian agencies. I've done things right and I've gotten things wrong. The one thing missing though for me then and you now is an easy to follow process that'll lead to predictable success. That's my commitment to you. I'll provide the process. If you accept responsibility and don't blame others, you'll find you have the control to shape your future. I put together this roadmap to help you understand the top 10 steps every small business must take as they travel down the road to success in federal government contracting. You can watch a previous, a previous video where I briefly introduce each of the steps. In this video, we'll be talking about meeting with a counselor from your local small business development center. Don't think you're too experienced or too big to establish a relationship with the SBDC counselor or others I mentioned. They can provide great advice for free and might be able to in make introductions to other small businesses or potentially even government folks. A lot of these people know um, federal, federal buyers who are always looking for qualified small businesses. The Small Business Administration spends hundreds of millions of dollars each year to help small businesses get started and to continue to have success. In this session, I'll briefly tell you about their small business development centers and then give you guidance on how to properly prepare for a meeting and then actually how to have a successful meeting. Finally, I'll wrap up this session with my suggestions for successfully interacting with your local SBDC. So quick intro to SBDCs, they're SBA administered. Um, they're run out of uh, the states that they're in, but the SBA provides partial funding. Their um, big focus is business startup and planning. If you've heard me talk about PTAX, PTACs are more about getting into government contracting and identifying opportunities, et cetera. The SBDCs are about, hey, I want to start a business. What should I do? Or I have a business. How can I reevaluate where I'm at and take it to the next level? So that's a big part of who they are. And then just kind of a, the last two bullets are focused on where they're at. Uh, there's SBDCs everywhere, and you can find them at sba.gov slash local assistance. But the thing to keep in mind is, this is 2021 when I'm uh, doing this video. And in the old days, people kept thinking you had to go in person to see, uh, see a counselor and to be able to interact. Well, now you have no excuse for not meeting your counselor because they do it virtually, a phone call or a video conference. And this is especially important for those of you who are farther away from your local uh, SBDC. Now it doesn't matter because you can just reach out, schedule an appointment electronically or on the phone and, and you're good to go. Let's talk about how to properly prepare. Um, I'm big into call preparation for any meeting you have, and this is no different. Um, so part of your preparation should begin with visiting the SBDC's website for the, um, the local facility you're going to, whether you're in Rhode Island or Arizona, um, go visit their website, see what they offer, see what they talk about on their website. It, this is really important because you don't wanna go into an SBDC counselor meeting and talk about stuff that's right there on their website. 
you know, hey, do you guys provide any training? It's like, yeah, Neil, didn't you look at our website? So take a minute and look at the SBDC's website. Many of them also have these checklists that they, they walk you through and they're designed to maximize how much they can help you when they actually meet with you. So visit your SBDC's website. The second major bullet I believe that is really important before you talk to any of these folks is know what you want to sell, right? If, if you're just thinking about, hey, I want to start a business, I'm not sure how much these people are going to be able to help you, right? They can ask you some questions, but you should really go to YouTube and watch some videos before you even talk to a counselor who's, whose job really is to help you shape that idea into a, into a business plan and then into a business. So if you don't know what you sell, you really want to focus on that. And this brings me to my keyword of focus, right? That second bullet, when I say know what you want to sell, uh, when I started my last couple of businesses in the GovCon space, I knew I was doing uh, network engineering and IT stuff in my first business. And my second business was all about Microsoft SharePoint. So I knew what I wanted to sell when I went in to talk to an SBDC counselor or anybody else who could advise me. Um, at least I was able to say, this is what I want. And they could begin to guide me through this process of how do I market it? How do I find out if the government buys what I sell, et cetera. So that second bullet really drives home focus, know what you want to sell. The third one I have here is understand your current state. And um, I was going to put on the bullet, understand your current maturity, but I thought the bullet would be too, <laughs> too offensive unless I had a chance to explain it. Some people think maturity is a bad thing. Like, oh, you're immature. Well, you know, if I say you're an immature person, that, that's insulting. But if I say your business is immature, it just means you're at a certain level. In, in order to go to the next level, you need maturity. So I know companies that are doing $20 million and they're, they're at a certain maturity level, but it's not a maturity level that'll help them get to 50 million. And they just need to shore up their business maturity. And that's all I mean here. In your case, know your business maturity, understand your current state. What do you know? What don't you know? Um, this will help you ask questions as you go in. The last bullet is um, understand why you'd succeed. And I'm tying that back to the bullet of know what you want to sell. So if I sit there and say that I want to sell Microsoft SharePoint services, products and services or something, well, the next question I want you to be prepared for, and you don't have to know this completely, but you have a feeling on why would you succeed if you were going to start a restaurant? You know, why do you think you should start a restaurant? Well, because I love food and, and I'm really good at cooking or something. It's like, okay, got it. If you can take a minute before you go in to meet with these counselors, know what you want to sell and then understand why you think you'd be good at it, then that's going to help your dialogue with those counselors go so much further. Um, and, they, you know, and they don't have to be the first ones asking you right there about um, how you think or why you think you'd succeed. So those are some tips on how to prepare. Um, when I get to the Neil's two, second, two cents uh, area, I'll tell you one more extra tip on how to prepare, but let's move into how to make the most out of a meeting. First thing is, um, I'm gonna talk to you in a second about a, a call plan sheet in detail, but when you prepare and you know that you're gonna talk about certain things and you have certain questions, don't hold that back. Uh, we call it a read ahead, right? You send the person you're going to meet a read ahead, something they can read ahead of your meeting. And you want to do that, whatever questions you have, um, if you have a general idea what your business is. Now, some of these SBDCs are more advanced on their website and they have um, surveys, if you will, that they'll ask you certain questions. Have you thought about this? Where are you going with this? And I think, I think those are great uh, for you because they help you answer the questions and for them because they're coming in more prepared to talk about your business compared to a generic business. So if when you prepare for your own meeting with this counselor, a day beforehand, a couple of days beforehand, if you're ready, send them whatever you have. Hey, I was going to ask these five, 10 questions or something. The second bullet I have here about making the most of your meeting is to listen and then listen some more. Uh, there's this great line that I'm probably going to butcher, but you know, God gave us two ears and one mouth and we're supposed to listen twice as much as we talk. Uh, in here, if I had had more space in my bullet, I probably wrote, listen, 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 and then listen some more. Um, and the whole point is you're not going in there to talk and tell them everything you know and how great you are. And, oh, I know all about business. Um, you, you're going in there to get their advice. These people are your unofficial board of advisor members. They want you to succeed. They want to help you succeed. And they're going to give you some advice. Now, they're going to ask you questions. And so that's an ideal time to talk, right? Um, but you want to answer their questions in a way that gives them 
uh, the answer to the question because they probably have five more questions behind it where they're guiding you down this path to really understanding what you want out of your business or if you're an existing business, where you think you're at and where do you want to go so that they can give you the right advice to get to that stage. The next one is, uh, you know, know that you'll have more than one meeting with this counselor. If, you're, if this is the first time you're going in there and, and since the, you're reading this bullet in this video, um, I think it is, right? But know that you'll have many, many meetings. I'm hoping you'll develop a relationship. And in the beginning, you might meet with them every couple of weeks, let's say, and they're going to give you some homework and you're going to go away and, and work on it. They're going to say, hey, go work on this marketing portion of our business plan or your business plan that we talked about. Go work on it and then come back. And they'll look at it, give you some feedback. So in early on, you'll meet with them a lot. Uh, or more frequently, not a lot, but just more frequently. And then pretty soon, maybe you're meeting with them once every three months, once a quarter there. Um, and then, you know, as you get more experience and as you're getting more advisors, those unofficial advisors, the people who want to help you succeed, you know, you'll touch base with these people. Now, I would say never less than once every six months because you just want to, hey, can we get a 15 minute call? I want to let you know what I've been up to, where I'm going. Um, they would love to stay in touch because SBDC counselors want nothing more than to hear about your success as you go along. And so, um, you know, as you go along, don't try to, the reason I put no, you'll have more than one meeting is you don't have to get everything answered right here in this first meeting. You know, you're establishing the relationship, you're kind of uh, getting an initial set of action items from them that you can move forward on. And then you'll come back and talk to them again. And then the last thing I say, especially since this is an electronic, you know, there's a really good chance you're gonna be on the phone, or on Zoom or Microsoft Teams, ask if you can record the call. Um, you know, it's it doesn't hurt if they say no, they say no. But a lot of people are like, sure, go ahead and tell them why you want to record the call. My recommendation is that you want to record the call because you know that they're going to give you such good, valuable advice that you don't want to miss any of it. And because you might be interacting with them and talking to them on the call, you might not write as many notes. And then you'll say, well, what did Jane say? She said to do this or whatever. But if you record the call, you go back and listen to it three, four times and make sure you're getting the most of the advice. So just ask. You never want to record a call with somebody without asking, um, but it's a push of a button if they say yes at the start of your meeting. Okay, so let's get into my two cents. I, I have an opinion about everything, obviously, right? We all do, but mine tend to be a lot more frequent, I think. Um, but I just want to give you my two cents. There's this formal way I introduce meeting with an SBDC counselor. And then there's these other things that are just, um, you might call them nihilisms. But the first one, and this is the most important thing I can give to anybody as it relates to meetings, is create a call plan sheet. I've done a whole video in the GovCon chamber on how to prepare for a meeting, how to have a call plan sheet. But I'll give you the gist of it here. Um, one of the first things you want to have are a set of objectives, one primary objective and a secondary objective. And the whole point of this is I'm going into this meeting today. I want to get this out of here. So let's say, for example, and let me use something farther down in the life cycle away from this. Um, if I'm calling a small business specialist and an agency, my objective might be to get an introduction to the program office person who does what I do. Let's say SharePoint or cloud technology or something. If I get that, I've hit my objective for that meeting. Um, but at least I know it. If I don't even write it down, then I'll be bouncing back and forth. And I'll talk in a minute about what kind of meeting that's like. When you're doing a, um, a call plan sheet and you're setting objectives with a small business development center counselor, you might sit there and say, you know what? I want a set of three or four action items I can do over the next couple of weeks to move my business forward a little bit, right? And that's exactly the type of things they'll give you. If you listen, uh, they'll give you advice. And that goes to my second bullet, listen to their advice. These people have been interacting with small businesses around the country for years, and they all uh, work together inside their small business development center. So the counselors work together, but they work closely with the SBA and get guidance and training and feedback from the SBD, uh, SBA on what's working out in the industry. And so when they give you advice, follow it. Don't, um, you know, first off, it's a good sign of respect, right? To follow somebody else's advice. But generally the advice you're gonna be getting at this stage is going to be spot on. Uh, it's just an executive who's on your team saying, hey, Neil, I think we should do this. Okay, let me go knock it out and I'll come back in a couple of weeks and show it to you. So follow that advice when you get it. The third bullet here, I have a um, create a follow-up plan and then follow up that plan or, or follow that plan. And so this begins in the meeting. As you're in the meeting, you want to sit there and write down any action items 
Um, you know, and, and the whole point of writing down action items, by the way, is at the end of the meeting, you want to just restate it. Hey, Jane, I heard you say this. I'm going to go away and, and try to come up with five reasons why I think I'll succeed in business. Uh, maybe one reason on why I'm different from somebody else who does cloud technology or SharePoint. So um, uh, there's that kind of action items that come out of a meeting. But then there's this follow up plan where you sit there and say, well, how do I follow back up with Jane? You want to make sure you're you're sending a thank you note and, and wait till the next day. Don't send it the same day, but send it the next day and send a thank you. And um, and in that thank you, just restate some of the key things you heard. Uh, I really appreciated hearing this and this. And then here's the action items, Jane, that I heard from you that I'm going to be taking away. It's going to show again, Jane, that you respected her time by taking the notes and, and capturing it. But then that set of action items will uh, be this follow-up plan. You also want to have a follow-up meeting scheduled with Jane. I told you you're going to meet with her or whoever, right? Multiple times. All that goes into your follow-up plan. My point of a follow-up plan is just like you would, you would not go into a meeting without preparing and writing down how you want the meeting to go. You want to make sure that you, uh, in your follow-up plan, that you have where you want to go after the meeting. And that's what that is. And it just occurred to me, I, I left something out on the call plan sheet. I want to put in because I got so excited about objectives. That's the objectives are the first thing you put in. The second thing you put in, the objectives are for you. The second thing you put in is the purpose of the call. Hey, Jane, the purpose of my call. And for your first meeting with an SBDC counselor, it's going to be kind of low key. If you meet with a buyer, you'll have a higher level purpose. Um, but when you have a purpose statement, for example, I want to figure out where am I and what do I need to do next? And with Jane, you want to communicate. And that's why I said earlier in the make the most of the meeting is share your call plan ahead of time. You want to make sure she understands your purpose. Uh, you don't want to walk into a meeting and just have Jane run it because you'll be missing out on the things you want. You'll want to collaborate with her on a successful meeting. So that's the second thing is have a purpose on your call plan sheet. And the third main thing of the call plan sheet is to have what I would say five to 10 questions, depending on who you're meeting with, et cetera. But you wanna have your questions. If you have certain questions like, um, you know, hey, how can I get in the Air Force? Uh, Tinker Air Force Base is right out there in Oklahoma, not far away from the SBDC. If I lived in Oklahoma, I would be saying, that might be one of my questions. Now, Jane could say, oh, I can introduce you, you know, after you've matured a little more in your business, after we get your business ready so that the people at Tinker Air Force Base don't, you know, turn you away because you're just too early or something. Anyways, have those questions in your call plan sheet. So objectives, purpose, and questions are what make up the call plan sheet. The last bullet for Neil's two cents is this um, difference between a great meeting and a successful meeting. This is uh, sales, sales, uh, you know, 101, sales 401. But people who follow this process will have far more success than people who don't. When you go into a meeting, you must make sure that meeting is successful, meaning it moves the sales cycle forward. In your case, when you're meeting with an SBDC counselor, you need it to be successful, meaning it's moving your business maturity forward. You're learning something new that will help you strengthen your organization. You know, here's how to get a website stood up or get a bank account or get into Tanker Air Force Base, whatever it is, right? It could be any level, but you need to have some clear definition of how it moved your business forward or how it moved the sale forward. A great meeting is what you hear from people who were less successful. They come back and they say, hey, oh, I had a great meeting with a the client. They listened to everything I, I, I said. You know, I was able to um, present our deck and share information. And we agreed that I would send them a, a white paper. Well, all it is is you giving of yourself to them. And that's not a successful meeting. A successful meeting, like I said, needs to have a tangible step forward. So make sure when you're creating the call plan sheet and you have an objective, the objective is what is going to make that meeting a successful meeting. And if you have no objective, you're going to have a great meeting. Jane's going to be super nice. You're going to have all sorts of stuff, but you're going to come away and not really feel like um, you have you have what you need to move forward to the next level. So I want to make sure you put that in place uh, as you go forward. I want to wrap up this session by saying how important it is for um, those of you who are already in business, successfully in business, uh, commercial side, or even in the government, and you're making a million or two, let's say in the government, you could be making 10. I, I'm, I don't care. But my point is you're, you're already feel like you got some, some, some success. The SBDC uh, counselors and the SBDCs themselves uh, are such a great asset to your growth. I, I call them, and I said this before, your unofficial board of advisors. 
but many, many, and I would say 70% plus, no government buyers. They know the contracting officers because the contracting officers or the small business specialists in their areas reach out to the SBDCs and say, hey, we got this opportunity coming down. You know any uh, small businesses that do SharePoint or welding? It's like, oh yeah, you know, just had somebody go through our leadership class or whatever it is. Make sure you meet these people. Once you get up and running, you don't have to spend a lot of time, but it, it, you know, I... I don't know what it would be like if you didn't meet with these people. It'd be kind of like having a good tool to do your job and then leaving that tool at home every day and saying, yeah, I'm not taking that tool. Why not? Well, I just don't feel like it. It's like, no, 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 no. SBDC counselors, nice as they are, are a tool in your toolbox. So make sure you get out there, whether you're new to the business side in government contracting or whether you've been in, make sure you have a counselor um, who knows you because they can become an advocate for you out there when you're off doing um, other activity. Okay, if you found this content valuable, others will too. Please give it a thumbs up so they can find it. If you'd like to connect with me personally, do so on LinkedIn. We often do free training webinars and interview federal buyers. Sign up for the GovCon Chamber's email list to be notified about these opportunities at www.govconchamber.com. Finally, please consider becoming a sustaining member of the GovCon Chamber of Commerce. Help us keep bringing you great content like this for a dollar a day. I'm Neil McDonald, wishing you great success.